In our previous video, we designed our first level, added tile maps, and got our camera following our player. In this video, we're going to get our character jumping around onto these platforms with double jumps and gravity effects. So let's go! First things first, let's add a jump input into our player controller's input system. Let's open up player controller by double clicking on it. And in here, let's tidy it up a bit. We don't need this look and we don't need this fire for now. So our move currently uses our up arrow and down arrow, which we're not using. We only use left and right. So we can remove these as well as W and S. Now we can add a new action for jump. Click the plus at the top, name this jump. Click on the no binding, click on the drop down by path and click listen. I'm gonna press up arrow. And I'm also gonna add another one, which I'll click listen and then press space bar. So we can jump using our up arrow on our keyboard or space bar. You can also add W if you like, which I'll do too. Since we can move left and right with A and D, then we click save asset and close this off. Now back on our player, if we go under events, then player, we can see our move function, then we have a new one for jump. So let's double click on our script to open it up and add a function for our jump. To keep your scripts tidy, you can add headers to your scripts, which display it back on your objects, so it's easy to keep track of all these public parameters. I'm going to add one for movement and one for jumping. For jumping, we're going to want to add a public float called jump power, and I'll set this to a default of 10f. Now we need to make a new function, same as our move, passing in our input action callback context. So inside here, we're gonna say if our context was performed, which means our button was fully pressed down, then our rigid body's velocity will equal a new vector two, we'll keep our horizontal velocity, to pass in the X, and our Y is gonna be our jump power. So back in Unity, under player input and under events, player, let's add in our new function, drag in our player, under player movement, select jump at the top, when we press play and press space or up on the arrow key or W, our player jumps. To make our jumping a little more interesting, back in the script, we can type else if context dot cancelled, which means we pressed our button but didn't hold it down. So like a light tap, then we can set our rigid body velocity equal a new vector to pass in our rigid body velocity X. And instead of jump power, We'll set it to our rigid body's current velocity dot y times 0 0.5. So basically, if we hold down our jump button, it'll be the full height of our jump power. Else if we do a light tap at the jump button, it'll be half the height or just a small little hop. So if I do a light tap, it's small. And if I hold down, it's big. Now currently, if I keep pressing jump, our character can fly. <laughs> so what we need to do is check when our player is on the ground and only allow him to jump when touching the ground. So back in our script, let's add a new header called ground check. And under here, we'll want three new variables. The first one being a public transform for our ground check position or ground check pos. Next will be a public vector two, which we'll call ground check size. And just to help us out, I'll set this to a default of some basic values so 0 0.5 and 0 0.05. And last of all, we want a public layer mask called ground layer. We'll use this to check if we're touching anything that's tagged with ground. To be able to visualize our ground check size, what we can do is add a new function called on draw gizmo selected. We can set our gizmo's color to be white, and then we'll tell Unity to draw us a cube where our ground check is. So I'll pass in our ground check position dot position and our ground check size. So we can see what this looks like if we go back into Unity and add a new empty child onto our player. We'll call this ground check. On our player, we can now drag in our ground check object into our ground check position. Now if we click on ground check, select the move tool, and then move this down, line up the line, just kind of with the feet of our player. Select our player again, and if we zoom in, you can see we have a white box here. We can change the width and the height of this. We can get this to match our player's feet. However, we want our ground check to match our sprite that we pass in. So while we're here, if we open up our sprite renderer and open up our tiles that we added in, I'm gonna search for our player sprite that we wanted to use. There he is, cool. So if you drag that into the sprite box, you can see we have our player. We want to open our box collider 2D and actually make sure this fits around our player nicely as well. And I've just noticed our ground check, it wasn't filled in. So if we say draw wire cube, we can see now a nice white line around our player's feet. I'm gonna go back down to our player script and edit our ground check size 
to match our player's feet. The height you'll want just to be just below the feet, so I'll do 0.4. So as soon as it touches this box, we're going to say we're on the ground and you can jump again. While we're setting up parameters, let's set up our ground layers layer mask. So you can see in here we've got all our different layers. If we click on our ground grid, in our layers we'll want to select ground in here. If you don't have ground in here, you can click add layer and just add it to one of these user layer boxes. So back to player, ground layer is ground. Now whenever our ground check position, so our ground check object, touches anything tagged with that ground layer tag, we'll know we're on the floor. So back in our script, we can write a new function. We can write a new function which returns a ball called is grounded. By default, we'll get this to return false. Then we want to say if our physics 2D dot overlap box, then we want to pass in the point. So that'll be our ground check position, dot position, the size, which is our ground check size, our angle is zero, so that's fine, and our layer mask, which is our ground layer. So if our ground check box is overlapping our ground layer, we'll return true. So before we jump, we wanna check, are we grounded? So if is grounded, do our jump logic. I'm spamming space. Let me see if you can hear. Yep, he's only jumping when we touch the ground. Cool. Aha, another problem. Do you see I'm sticking to the side of this platform? Our player has friction, so it can grab onto things. I got a fix for this. In our player's rigid body 2D, we can set our player's material. In your asset, right click, go create 2D, physics material 2D, and I'll call this frictionless. Then set our friction to be zero. Select our player and drag frictionless into our material. Cool, we can no longer stick to that platform. But you know what? I can't actually reach that platform. It'll be handy if we had a double jump. <laughs> you knew I was gonna do a double jump. Okay, back in our script, let's add the functionality for a double jump. So up the top, let's add two new variables. One for our max jumps, which we'll set as a default to two. It's gonna be a public int. And then another int, which can be private, as our jumps remaining. Now we don't wanna be able to jump only when we're touching the ground. We want to be able to jump midair. So what we wanna say is, if our jumps remaining is greater than zero, we can jump. And after jumping, we want to make our jumps remaining go down one. So you can do jumps minus minus. We want this down in our light tap as well. And now when we touch the ground, instead of just returning true, we can set our jumps remaining back to our max jumps. Don't need to return false. And we can make this void instead of returning a ball. I'm going to change this name to be ground check instead of is ground. And since we're not calling this before we jump each time, we're going to instead call this in our update function. So we're constantly checking if we can jump and how many jumps we have remaining. Cool, now we can reach. Now let's play around with some gravity. This will help your platformer feel more unique and you'll be able to personalize it to the feel you want. But basically this is gonna affect the way we fall. So back in our script, let's add one more header, call it gravity. And here let's get a public float called base gravity. I'm gonna set mine to a default two. Then another public float, and we'll call this max fall speed. I'm gonna set mine to be 18. And then another public float, and this will be our full speed multiplier and set to a default of two. We'll keep all of these public so we can play around with them to find the right feel while testing our game. So let's create a new function for handling our gravity. We'll say if our rigid body's velocity dot y is less than zero, then we're gonna set our rigid body's gravity scale to equal our base gravity times our full speed multiplier. What this does is makes your player fall increasingly faster so it doesn't feel as floaty. In case you have a big fall and you don't want to smash through the floor, we'll cap off our player's fall speed by going RV velocity equals a new vector two. We'll pass in our normal X velocity. Then we're going to use a math function. So type mathf.max and pass in rv.velocity.y and then minus our max fall speed. This will cap our player out at their max fall speed so they won't fall any faster than whatever we pass in, mine being 18. Now, if we're not falling, we'll say else our rb.gravity scale goes back to our base gravity. And we'll call our gravity function up in our update. Back in Unity, make sure you got play focused on so we'll be able to edit these gravity parameters as we play. You can see now our player falls a bit heavier, but still gets to jump nice and light. Try and get him to fall from really high so you can see. Cool. <laughs> So now you can play around. If you want more of a floaty game, you can set your max fall speed to something lower, like five. You'll see we fall down real slow. And you can still control your character while in the air. 
maybe for like a parachuting game or something. Or you can set it really high. 40 might be a bit much. He drops really fast. I quite like 18. It gives a weighted feeling without feeling too fast. But if you wanted to make a platformer where you had to move side to side while falling and avoid obstacles or something, you might want to set this to around 10. Gives you a little more time to react. Maybe even lower. But that's it. That was quite a complicated one. So good job. <laughs> In the next video, we're going to take a look at wall jumps. Right now we just slide off the side. See ya.